Ayush Das said Father Pavone should join the SSPX. No. I no. highly doubt that. Ain't gonna happen. He's not. A, I, he's not a traditional priest. Yeah, he's not a traditional priest. He doesn't say the yeah. traditional mass. And to be honest, and you, yeah. he. I don't think the society would want him because he. Um, has wow. disobedience problems. Yeah. And they're very, yeah. very strict. They'd, they'd make him go back to seminary, then they make him go to a society but seminary. The other, the other thing. Yeah, the other thing is, uh, and because here's another another thing, and I, I don't mean to uh, be nitpicky, but uh, the SSPX is also not a religious order, it's a society. Of apostolic life, which is like the fraternity. The fraternity is also not a religious order. The Institute of Christ the King is a religious order in a sense. They're they're canons, um, so it's slightly different as well. All these different categories mm-hmm. of things, but the fraternity and the society they don't take religious vows. They don't take the ch- vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So they're more similar to diocesan priest in that sense, uh, except they live in community and have a shared charism, and that's yeah. what unites them. Yeah. But a slight, slight thing. Yeah. You know, here's the thing <laughs> about um, about this. The, there's so many, the, okay, so these kind of celebrity priests, the problem with this is the state of religious communities and the state of, of the world in that sense, because this kind of like celebrity priest status, the priests who do these public uh, displays, which I think are very, very important. We need mm-hmm. priests to do this. Traditionally speaking, they'd be part of religious orders. Now, Father Karapi was technically part of a religious order. Yeah, however, no, he, no, he was. He was. However, not te- technically, well, he I know. Was I say te- order, the yeah. reason why I say technically is because. Technically means actually he was actually part of the religious order, but he wasn't actually part of the religious order because he wasn't traveling with religious order. He wasn't. He was on his own. He was doing his own well, thing. I, can I tell and you? So I can tell you what happened. Right. Well, I, I was hold there. on one second. So the idea here is that you're supposed to, in a religious order, when you go and do these kind of missionary things, you travel with other priests yeah. who are part of your religious order, right. and there yeah. are set rules. Yeah. For missionary priest. So if you look at the rules, like for instance, the passionist, they have very strict rules when they go and do their retreats, when they go and do their missionary activity, they're not allowed to stay, eat with certain people. They're not allowed to go. And this isn't like a St. Paul, St. Peter type thing where yeah. St. Peter is like, I don't want to eat with you because you're bad. It's like, right. no, you don't want to put yourself in a situation right. where you get a big head, where you get a celebrity status, where you have these yeah. kind of things happening. Yeah. And these religious orders were built and created in order to defend you from this. And now now you have priests that are part of religious orders, that are legitimately part of religious orders, are doing these things, but mm-hmm. they are not being held to account from the very beginning. And once they get humongous, then the religious order or the local bishop is like, whoa, 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 how did this happen? Yeah. And they step in, and it's like at this point, there are it's already you're down uh, the bo- yeah. block ten blocks on the road. Yeah, for sure. So here's here's the thing that bothers me about this whole thing. Uh, yes, all everything that's being said is true, but that's not actually the point. No, I mean, there's there's a, a disobedient priest or a dime a dozen. All these things happen. <laughs> priests mishandling money is a dime a dozen. We just reported, Bree Dale reported from Daily Wire about the priest who is selling Vatican art, the, the intellectual property of it, making tens of thousands of dollars or more. Um, at the end of the, yeah, these things happen. It's bad. It's not good. Here's the real problem. The real problem is this is a, a use this is a, a test case to now apply this to priests who have nothing wrong with them. And they always do this. They always do this. They did this they, Precedent. Both, both in the secular world and in the religious world. They, they do this. The secular world, what did they do? They canceled Alex Jones off of social media. And every, no one cared. Everyone was like, well, it's Alex Jones. He says crazy things. He has conspiracy theories. When he's also bombastic. We don't even like him anyway. And so nobody came out to defend Alex Jones. Then what do they start doing? First, they, they start for the gypsy. They start banning other people, and then what do they do? They ban Donald Trump off of social media. Then they start banning random Twitter users who are like whatever off of so- Twitter, Facebook. Are uh, my buddy. Um, uh, Josh Patterson, he gets banned off of Facebook like every week for saying super innocuous things. It's ridiculous. That's a precedent. The same thing they do in the church. They promote you away to somewhere, or in this case, they're setting a precedent now where they're, they're having a canonical trial without you present. He's never been given his di- in his exact charges. Yeah. He's giving general charges because now you can say, okay, now I I can now start digging around if things start coming up. Now I can apply whatever it is. And now people are coming up. Well, Father did do X, Y, or Z, so it does make sense that he get in trouble. What are his specific 
accusations. He said he makes blasphemous commentary. What is a specific accusation? Is it the blasphemy that we talked about on the show? Because that's not actually what they quoted. They just said blasphemous, and we're just guessing. We're saying, okay, it was probably this thing that he said. Oh, it's probably this thing that he did. But we don't actually know. They don't tell us. And this is a big deal because now they can apply this to any priest. Any priest can be, okay, you did X, Y, or Z. Well, tell me, what exactly did I do wrong? I can repent of it. I can do whatever it is I need to do. Yeah. The response is to just laicize you. And so now he, had, he they said he has no means of, of, uh, of defending himself now. Mm-hmm. He cannot appeal it. That's absurd. That's crazy. And the canonical lawyers are, are chiming in. But ultimately, who cares about canonical lawyers? Who cares about the canon law if it comes down from Rome? Because this order came down from Rome. If they appeal it, what are they going to do? If Pope Francis decides, okay, well, I'm just not going to hear your case. What, who, who do you have to hear? Yeah. It'd be like if the Supreme Court well, went all the way to the Supreme Court and ignored this it. Trend. The, the bishop in Puerto Rico dismissed. I know priest. You know? I know priest who, and uh, this might be slightly scandalous, but I know priests <laughs> who have not been excommunicated. They're in perfectly good standing. They have, there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah. They've never been, have any kind of censure whatsoever mm-hmm. who say mass to this day right. publicly, but they have no canonical mission because they were just told one day, yeah, don't you're, come. you're gone from this, from this parish. Yeah, don't and they're up. like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. Your excellency. Uh, so where am I going now? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So what did the priest do? Well, he continues the work of priesthood. He keeps doing the things he's doing. Now, is that the right thing to do? Is it the wrong thing, yeah. thing to do? I don't know, but it's the reality of the situation. They're already doing these kind of things where they're greatness. punishing you without actually punishing you. And the other thing is these uh, the accusation of blasphemy. I think I think you read this. Uh, you, you I may have mentioned it off air that the accusation of blasphemy does not have a canonical penalty. No, I read it on air. Oh, you did read it. I read it from the okay. article from I Father Gerald Murray. Yeah, that's what I thought. Do you want to read it again or no? I mean, I was just yeah. making the point that this is not a canonical crime. It's a sin. It's now, a mortal sin. Yeah. And if in a just society, the blasphemy would be punished to the highest degree. Like this is a very, very mm. great crime. King Louis the Ninth, yeah. <laughs> he would give you a correction once, he'd scourge you, and if yeah. you blasphemed, and if he did it a second time, yeah, then oh, yeah. he'd execute you. So yeah. I mean it's this is a grave, grave evil blasphemy. And we need to take it very seriously. But are we applying that across the board? Are we going to start? Is the, is, the, is the bishops of Rome, and please, I would love this. I would love this. Are the bishops of Rome going to come out and publicly condemn blasphemy and order all Catholics saying, yeah. hey, Teachable we're going to, this is going to be an excommunicatable offense from now on. If you commit the sin of blasphemy, you are going to be excommunicated and make that a rule and say, we're using but Father Pavone as a test case just to show thing, our point. That'd be, that'd be interesting. If, yeah, and I mean, I've certainly heard priest blasphemy before especially the casual way not like like you're saying there's a difference between intentional and then casual and 99 percent of the time it's casual uh, e- either way it's both bad one is just worse there's mm. degrees of bad mm-hmm. and so casual blasphemy is obviously a lesser sin but it's still a mortal sin to to blaspheme and the but if you're going to be intentionally doing it, then it becomes a grave grave evil so yeah 